Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm just doing a quick update for you here. I just went to start editing and I realized that the first part of my video was not recording with any sound. So when it clicks into the second part of the video, you will see me talking about how I was having microphone issues and apparently those microphone issues were much worse than I thought they were because I had no sound at the beginning of my video. So um, yeah, super frustrating, but that's the way it is. So you will see a little bit of a wardrobe change and also a background change as uh, we flip into the second video, which is the proper video. So anyways, uh, like I said, very annoying, but I was just telling you about um, how nice it is today and how nice the weather is and also just catching you up on uh, my finished object, which I didn't actually have to show um, the pair of socks that I showed you in my last uh, knitting vlog, which was two uh, videos ago. They have been finished and they have been already gifted to my friend who is gonna be undergoing surgery. So anyways, I didn't have that to show you. And then the other thing I was just going to show quickly is um, a little update on my cross stitch which is by the frosted pumpkin stitchery so last time you saw it i was just starting on the little cherry tree and now i've done this whole um kind of lettering up here and the rainbow and then also the um, rain boots and the little thing at the beginning top there and then i'm going to be starting on the flowers down at the bottom so yeah, and then the next up, the next part of the video is just gonna flip in and I'm gonna start talking about my second finished object. So yeah, I apologize for um, having kind of a weird setup this week. I apologize if you can hear my dog barking in the background. It's just that kind of day. So yeah, stay tuned for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that, you guys. I am having microphone issues. My microphone is trying to do voice commands as I'm recording. I don't know how to turn that off. And so I'm just going to have to go without a microphone. I had my microphone plugged in the last couple episodes, but I honestly don't even know if it was picking up or not because I wasn't having these issues. So I have a feeling, and then judging by the sound when I was editing, I have a feeling that my microphone wasn't even on the last few episodes. So I'm really sorry about that. Um, hopefully you can either use the closed caption feature or turn up your volume um, because it just keeps on tripping out on me and anyways super frustrating so I just unplugged it um, because because it's driving me crazy <laughs> uh, maybe this is a good lesson for me I should not buy you know a $12 microphone off of Amazon for professional-ish recordings I think I'm gonna have to invest in a new microphone one of the ones that just sits on the table and can pick up from a little further away instead of this clip-on because it's driving me crazy anyways so apologies but hopefully you can hear me so um, let's do this again you haven't seen the last couple of things, but I've tried to show you these multiple times. These are my finished socks for John, which I've just finished. I am very happy they're finished. Um, John's feet aren't huge, but they're definitely, um, you don't have to knit bigger size than I would for myself. So I actually started these in um, November of last year and didn't really work on them, just put a little bit of the ribbing on and then they got kind of put aside because I had other things going on, I guess. And anyway, so I pulled them out at the end of July and we were about to go away on a couple days for a camping trip. So I brought them with me for that. And yeah, I pulled them out. I had um, 75 stitches on here. I needed a multiple of three for my ribbing. I've done one by two ribbing here. Uh, so I had 75 stitches on the needle on 2.25 millimeter needles, um, but they were just looking too big. This yarn is an 80-20 and I think it's just a little plumper. So um, yeah, they were looking too big. I showed them to John, he agreed. So I had only done, you know, I just started doing the um, stockinette portion of the leg on the first sock. So I ended up ripping them apart and cast them on again with 72 stitches on the same size needles. And now they're a really nice fit. John tried on the first one when it was finished and they fit him really well. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I have a good formula now for John socks and I'm getting better at being able to recognize, you know, if they're going to be the right size for him in the end as I'm working on them. 
So, you know, that takes time just being able to visualize that. So yeah, there's nothing super special about them. Like I said, there's 72 stitches. I did 20 rows of um, knit one purl two ribbing. And then I did about five inches of the leg here before I put in my fish lips kiss heel. And then the foot I do for him, I do nine inches before the toe decreases because uh, he has about a size 11 foot and it's actually about 11 inches long, I think. So that ends up working out perfectly if I do nine inches and then two more inches for the toe. So the yarn here is this really pretty speckled yarn. This is dyed by To The Max Yarn Co. Um, I don't know where my tag went. Oh, it's inside the ball. So this is the yarn. Uh, really fun speckle, like that kind of ochre yellow color. And then there's black and like a really dark green and then like a burgundy red speckle on there. So there's the tag for To The Max Yarn Co. Um, yeah, that helps focus if I kind of block my face out there. And it was a little sock set with a pink mini, like a bright pink mini, but I didn't think John was going to be loving that. So I decided to swap it out for this yarn that I just had sitting in my um, scrap sock yarn. It is some sort of like workhorse fingering weight yarn um, that I got from... I think I got it from Beehive, but I can't remember the name, whether it's Opal or one of those brands. And it's just in this nice uh, dark, dark green, which ended up pairing really well with the speckled yarn. So I'm really happy with that. I think this colorway was called Cigarillo and it was a sock set. Um, and yeah, as I said, I think I said in this round, it's 80-20 yarn and it is... Um, 415 yards to 115 grams. So it is a little thicker. It's that thicker base, which explains why I had to um, go down a little bit on my stitch count. Um, because normally an 80-20 would have 400 yards to 100 grams. And this has the extra 100, or this has the extra 15 grams and um, is only 400 yards. So anyways, that explains that. Um, but like I said, really happy with these. I love the To The Max Yarn Co. Um, that is a company founded by um, Jody of the Grocery Girls and her kid. And they kind of work together on it, which I think is really great. And they're putting out some really amazing yarn. Um, since I bought this, um, I bought this at some point last year in the fall. And I think they were just kind of starting the company out then. And since then, they've really expanded their colorway offerings, and they're just doing a really nice job of dyeing. Uh, so I would definitely check out To The Max Yarn Co. if you have not checked them out before. They are an awesome company. They are Canadian, and they are on Etsy, so you can just check them out. And then their Instagram is just To The Max Yarn Co., and Max is spelled M-A-C-K, because uh, I believe Jody's kid is named Mackenzie. So I think that's all I have to say about that. That's it for finished objects. I have been trying to go through some projects and put some time on them and work through them. Uh, the next pair of socks I plan to finish is this um, nine inch circular project that I've been doing. I've been working on these for a long time as well, um, but I did get the heel put into this and working on the foot now. So this is the next thing to come out and get worked on. I'll probably pop these in my craft room and that will be the project that I work on. Um, you know, first thing in the morning, I usually come in here and do some knitting before I get into my day um, doing my Etsy shop and everything. And I've got this just in one of my project bags that I made quite a while ago. Um, this is really beautiful tulip pink fabric that was out of print but I managed to get some scraps of so I made myself kind of a scrappy bag um, and then the next thing that I have to show you is a new cast on so even though I'm trying to finish up projects I just felt the urge to start something I've been wanting to start one of these for myself for a while now anyways and I realized that I already had some yarn in my stash that was going to work. 
So I just decided to cast this on the other day. Um, so this is what I've done so far. This is the Summer Sorrel Tea by uh, Wool and Pine, or um, I think the actual designer, she is Dank Fiber on Instagram. So I love this pattern. I've already made the Sorrel sweater which I think I showed you, well, for sure I showed you, but probably a while ago. So that one is a fingering weight where you hold it double with mohair and you make um, more like a winter sweater and it has kind of a higher neckline. Um, my Instagram profile picture right now is me wearing that and I really love it. It's so beautiful. Um, it has these same dipped stitches. Um, but this is the t-shirt version. So I think they now have a DK version called the Spring Sorrel. And then they have the original Sorrel, which is the sweater that you hold with mohair. And then this is the Summer Sorrel tee. And so it has these really beautiful dip stitches, which are actually quite simple to do. They're not that complicated at all. And it has this really nice um, I-cord cast on here which you can see, which is making like a really beautiful neckline. And so I'm really excited about this. Um, like I said, I only started it a couple days ago and I've put quite a bit on the yoke so far. And then once I'm finished the yoke, um, there's a little bit more to go. I think I've gone through the first chart now and I'm about to start the second and third charts, which are much smaller. And then after that, it's basically just, um, like it's just knitting. Um, you show you wear it on the reverse stocking outside, but once you're finished this chart and all the dip stitches, you turn it inside out and then you knit so that the reverse stocking it sh shows on the right side. So like I said, really happy with this. I'm very excited to have um, a knit tee. I don't have any knit tees in my knit wardrobe and that's something I would like to work on. So I thought this would be a good one to start with. And, you know, I do like colorful things, but my wardrobe day to day is pretty, pretty tame. Like it's a lot of neutrals, a lot of black and charcoal and gray and just a little bit of color. So while I love all the beautiful speckled yarns that people use in their sorrels, I just decided to go with this nice neutral gray. Um, because I knew I would get some wear out of it that way and I just thought it would be easier to wear um, it would just it would just be easier for me to wear and I'd be more likely to wear it if it was just a little more subdued of a color so this is the yarn I'm using it is a very beautiful variegated gray um, it is called uh, the colorway is called sterling and the yarn is by euphoria knits which is um, a friend of mine from Texas and they are wonderful dyers. This is their frenzy base. Uh, they call it their deluxe sock base and I absolutely love the frenzy base. It is 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon and it's a 437 yard to 100 gram. So it is just a little bit softer because it's 85% merino rather than um, 75 25 or 80 20 and it's just a little bit rounder um, but it's so soft you guys it's so beautiful I really love it this tonal gray is gorgeous I actually think I originally bought this planning to make um, I think it's called the swallowtail sweater it has a big color work butterfly across it and this was going to be the main color for that but after Kind of thinking about it, I realized that the swallowtail probably wasn't, it just wasn't something I wanted to work on necessarily, and I ended up repurposing some of that yarn for something else. I can't remember what I put it in. I think some of it went into my um, City Limits sweater, but either way, so I have two skeins of this, and it might not be quite enough for me to do the entire length of the T. Um, I think I'm short. Um, I think it said it for my size, which is the medium size that I needed about 950 yards. And I think I have, um, 
I think I've just under 900. So we'll see how that goes. I might just squeak by, I might not. But what I think I'll probably do is at some point um, when I'm working on the body, I will just finish off the little short sleeves. It just has short sleeves like this does. Um, and then that way I can just continue on and knit the body until I run out of yarn. So yeah, I'm not alternating skeins right now. I think what I'll do is when I get close to the end of the first ball, I will just kind of stripe and fade in the second ball because the colors do look really close right now. I know I should be probably alternating skeins once I finish the dip stitches, but I just don't want to. <laughs> So I'm just going to risk it and just do a little bit of fading. Um, you know, maybe I can like start the sleeve and see if it's going to really contrast. And then from there, I'll know if I have to fade it or not, or if I can just kind of keep going. Um, yeah, so I'm doing everything to pattern I'm using 3.75 millimeter needles. And I'm knitting the third size, I believe it is, which is the 39 inch size. So I think it'll have just a little bit of positive ease. Um, I'm a 38 inch bust, so it should just have, you know, just enough room that it's not skin tight or too tight. And um, I'm hoping that with this beautiful soft yarn, it'll have a really nice drape to it. So yeah, stay tuned for more on this. I have a feeling that this is gonna be a quick project, just judging by how fun it's been just to put on the yoke so far. And yeah, again, this is the Summer Sorrel Tea and you can find that um, on Ravelry. It's by Woolen Pine, which is a design um, kind of collab between two designers. And I love it, I'm really happy with it. And I think, I think more teas are definitely in my future. I have two skeins of black yarn to use up, um, again, that I bought for something else that I'm not planning on knitting anymore. It was for um, my Sunset Highway sweater, which I ended up changing out the main color for. So I have two skeins of this tonal black. And so I think I'm going to find another tea pattern, maybe something with um, maybe some dropped stitches. I've seen some really nice dropped stitch designs or something kind of open to kind of show off um, against that black yarn. So yeah, that's really all I've been working on. I've been trying to stay kind of monogamous and, you know, get, uh, get some projects finished <laughs> before, you know, launching into something else. So um, yeah, you know, I wish I had more to show you, but I'm pretty happy with the progress that I've put on so far. I knit that one pair of socks that um, was gifted in under a week. And then this one pair for John, I basically knit in under three weeks from start to finish. So I'm pretty happy with that. And as I said, the next pair of socks that I wanna work on is my nine inch circular socks. I still have my goldfish memory shawl to um, do some work on. I just decided to take a little break from that. And um, my next sweater that I want to finish is my throw over sweater by Andrea Mowry. That's a worsted weight sweater. So I pulled that out of, um, I have like a, we have like a, you know, Ottoman like sort of thing. What do you call it? Coffee table. <laughs> in our living room and it's one of the ones that you flip up and has storage in it and that's where I keep all my uh, knitting projects so I dug through there and I pulled out my throw over because that is the next thing I would like to work on and then I still have a pink velvet sweater which is technically a sweater but it's it's short sleeved and cropped as well so it's almost like a tee and I have yarn for that um, also dyed by Euphoria Knits that I bought quite a while ago so I would like to start that as well so yeah, once I get some of these other whips under control, I will start doing some new things. I was looking on Ravelry, I have seven works in progress right now, which isn't terrible, but I would like to get that down a little bit before I start too many new projects. Um, but yeah, like I said, fall is on the way and um, I'll hopefully have some more knitting time coming up soon. So then the last thing I wanna show you is um, some things that are in the Etsy shop right now. 
And then I actually pulled fabric for my next update. So maybe I'll show you that quickly. So um, if you watched my last episode, I showed you the kind of camping themed fabric that I had pulled for my update. Um, so I have, um, I have sold a few bags, but there are some left here. So I'll show you those quickly. I have um, just one of these lavender sachets left with the little bears, the bear project bag sold. Um, and then as well, the main project bag that I made out of this fabric is sold, but I do have two lavender sachets. This one has a little deer and a little tree house with a little mouse in it, some bees and frogs. And then this has, um, you know, the top of a little tent and a campfire and a little skunk and a boom box. So that's tulip pink fabric. Very cute. I'm unfortunately out of that fabric. Um, and then the other lavender sachets left are this, I'm calling it van life. Uh, it has, uh, you know, a little surfboard, a little camper vans, and then, um, yeah, so I have three of these little sachets left. This one has the redwood on it, and then the little mountains as well, and I have a large project bag in that fabric, which you can see it all here. Very cute with the orange zipper, like kind of a rusty orange zipper, and then um, like a nice teal lining here with a speckled pocket. And then I also have that in a large bucket bag, the drawstring bucket bags, which are huge. Um, you can see they have a really big base on them and they hold a ton. They've been very popular. So I have this one, it has like a pink drawstring channel and then all that teal on the inside as well. Um, for other bucket bags, I have this camping fabric, which is super cute, has vans on it as well, whoops, and little trailers, and then the inside is this um, blue arrow fabric, and then there's a white and metallic gold pocket, and then I have this one, which are these little wolves that are kind of howling, little wolf faces, and this has a um, kind of checkered batik black and white on the inside and then this is the same collection as the wolves but they're little bears they're so cute i really like this one i still can't decide i said this last time if these bears are yawning or if they are roaring but i think i think they're sleepy personally and so this has a really fun butterfly lining and then like a dark yellow uh, slip pocket so that's what I have left for bucket bags. I have that camping fabric in a large uh, zipper bag as well. So these have the handle. They're just a little smaller than my bucket bags. And then they have um, the slip pocket as well. This has a bird, gray bird lining with some metallic gold. I have a sock size bag with the bears and it has that ochre yellow on the inside. These are great for two at a time socks if that's um, something that you do or just for any sock project. These are my go-to sock size bags um, that I really like. I have the wolves here as well. And then this has, yeah, just a black and white on the inside. And then this is my other sock size. I call these the square sock size and it's in that camping fabric with just like a nice neutral um, kind of geometric design in it. And then I have this one um, drawstring bag left with these very sweet foxes. So it's like moonlit, um, like meadow with the little foxes running through. And I used my um, cork leather tags on there that I got from Brick Bubble. And then it has that um, speckled navy with copper metallic on it. So that's just one medium drawstring left. And then my next update, which I don't have a date for, but we are actually going on a three day camping trip. So I think it's going to be maybe a midweek update or I might actually push it until like the Monday when we get back because I think we leave on Thursday and we're not back until Sunday. So anyway, stay tuned for that if you want to check it out on Instagram, but I'm going to do like a kind of like a garden theme. So I've kind of been calling it like garden magic or backyard magic. You know, I know I don't need to do a theme, but it's fun for me and it helps me kind of uh, narrow down what I'm gonna do for the week. So I found a little bit of this fabric, which I didn't actually realize I had left. It has gnomes and dragonflies and little mushrooms. 
and so that will be enough probably for a medium size or a small bag. I have this one as well which is like mushrooms and crystals and just kind of botanical designs. I have enough of that for a couple bags. Um, I have these little strawberries. I have strawberries in navy and red and then I also have this um, bright blue with the pink and so you can see where I'm kind of going with this like gardeny themed um, I've got these really great apples a lot of these are cotton and steel or sorry ruby star society fabrics um, the ladies who used to be under cotton and steel they now operate under ruby star so some of them are from their old label and some of them are from the new ruby star label so I've got these kind of like peaches which I don't know why this looks vintage to me I think it's the way that they printed it and it's on their kind of natural background and then just a couple other kind of cute, um, you know, I thought fairies would be an appropriate thing to add into the garden magic. I have this um, kind of stamped flower design and some hummingbirds and bicycles. I think I'm going to use all these, but we'll see. And then also the little chickens. I found this at my local fabric shop, which is called Woven Fabric Gallery. They have an online store as well. Uh, so it's wovenfabricgallery.com, I believe. Um, but I thought these chickens were super cute. And again, I thought that would be kind of appropriate to add into the backyard magic or garden magic uh, update. So stay tuned for those. I will give you updates on Instagram. And um, as I said, they will probably be up in the shop either on um, around the 25th, which would be like a Wednesday, I believe. Um, but I might push it to, you know, like the 30th or whatever it is. I think the 30th is the day that we'll be back. So it just depends on um, how Canada Post goes this week. I am waiting on some more lining fabrics that I've ordered and they just shipped out yesterday or the day before from Alberta from Studio 39 Fabrics. I did a big order to restock uh, my solids. So once those come, I can finish up these bags. I'm gonna start um, tomorrow and get some of the outside panels put together and then I'll just be on hold until those come. So either way, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching today and seeing what I've been up to. I'm sorry Sammy hasn't been visiting the last little while. He's just sleeping all the time on the bed. So <laughs> maybe next episode I'll try and get him up on the couch before I record and see if he sticks around for a bit because I know you guys like to see Sammy. Um, yeah, so anyways, I hope you're doing well. I hope you enjoyed watching um, and seeing what I've been working on. Um, if you are um, on Instagram, I'm still running the summer vacay cal and that runs till the end of this month. So you still have time to get in your summer vacay knitting projects. Um, it's very loosely organized. I'm not really picky about what you're doing. Um, it's basically just a vacation staycation knitting. So show me what you're working on. You know, if you've got your feet up in your backyard and having a cool drink and working on your knitting, that is just, that's enough for me. Uh, it doesn't have to be really on theme or anything. Just want to see what you're working on. So um, I'll draw some prizes for that. Um, probably the first of September or something like that. And um yeah, make a little prize package for you guys. So if you haven't entered that or if you have a couple more projects finished, um, yeah, go ahead and tag those with the Summer Vacay Cal hashtag. I'll put it underneath here in the description box so you can see the spelling and everything. And other than that, I really hope that you're enjoying your August. I hope you're having a good month so far and I hope the rest of the month goes well for you. And we'll be seeing you again soon. Bye.